So I too would like to thank uh, Lord Truscott for securing this debate. Uh, I'm not sure he expected the consensus around the House in the way, in, when he, he, he put it down. My Lords, the UK energy policy should provide secure, affordable and climate-friendly energy with an emphasis on homegrown energy, primary fuels and innovation for the future. Now, the UK onshore oil and gas is a, is a representative body for industry and has suggested that to achieve the aims of secure, affordable and climate-friendly energy, the UK will need a balance of natural gas to provide heat, electricity, essential chemical feedstocks and to improve air quality, renewables and nuclear to generate electricity and oil to power transportation and provide essential chemical feedstocks. So, my Lords, gas is a vitally important source of energy for the UK, and we have so much of it in our own country. The IOD says that shale gas could cut, out, ga cut our ga gas imports by half. The National Grid believes that British shale gas could heat every home in the UK, and shale gas, as we've heard, could create 60,000 jobs. But how ironic... On the fourth, in September 2016, just gone, the first shipment of shale gas arrived from the US to the United Kingdom. It arrived at Grangemouth Refinery in Scotland. My Lords, how ridiculous when shale gas produced in the US arrives in Scotland when the Scottish Parliament has banned fracking. <laughs> As Francis Egan of uh, Cordrilla uh, uh, so rightly said at the time, they are taking ethane, turning it into liquid, transporting it across the sea in a container, turning it back into gas, and then pumping it into Grangemouth. Just beneath Grangemouth are deposits of shale gas that the Scottish Government is saying you cannot touch. My Lords, today in, in the United States, Around 50% of oil production and two-thirds of gas production is from so-called non-conventional wells. Well over 300,000 such wells have been drilled. And the fact that the oil and gas industry pumps chemicals into the ground in this process causes opposition from environmental groups. However, despite Hollywood dramatising the dangers, there is no significant evidence of any environmental damage from fracking. And I agree with Lord Young. It has been suggested that test fracking in the north of England caused a minor earthquake, but I understand the magnitude of the so-called tremor was no more likely to cause damage to property than the vibrations of a heavy truck passing a building. So, my Lords, in reality, the opposition to fracking in the UK has more to do with perceived blight on the surface environment and the volume of heavy industrial traffic rather than the theoretical poisoning of aquifers, which I, I'm told some would say is impossible, as shale operations are much deeper than the water table, and the water table is, is cased from the well bore, as it was explained by Lord Mayor. We have, indeed, sensible regulations in this country which will help maintain the environment whilst being able to produce the gas that we need. So in the, in the energy industry, my Lords, there are three key issues often quoted. One, energy security, now that our traditional fossil fuels are running out. Long-term affordability and financial security of energy. And thirdly, climate change and environmental concerns, uh, decarbonisation targets. Our North Sea oil and gas reserves are running low. Production has fallen, as we know, two-thirds in the last 15 years. The gas represents 35% of our fuel consumption in the UK, and we currently import over half our gas from Norway, from the rest of Europe, maybe Russia, and Qatar. My Lords, by 2035, we may well have to import 90% of our gas. And from a security point of view, that is alarming. Now, the British Geological Survey estimates that there is 1,300 trillion cubic feet of shale gas in the north of England. Now, even if we recover just one-tenth of the estimated shale gas reserves, that is enough for at least 40 years' supply, as we currently use just under three trillion cubic feet per annum. 
And if it is accepted that we need gas and accept that it is more secure, better for domestic employment and the development of a manufacturing industry as part of our industrial strategy, and it produces a potential bonanza in tax receipts, then the answer clearly is to exploit these shale beds. My Lords, let us not turn our backs on a lower carbon energy source, maintaining our own energy security, the growth of a manufacturing industry with jobs and careers for a whole new generation. And as the North Sea reserves do run out, let's be positive and create a shale revolution.